Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacy Pedia. In this session, we are going to learn a very interesting topic that is about the sterile water for injection. You must have heard the term sterile water for injection, purified water, water for injections. So they are all three different kinds of the water being used into the pharmaceutical industry. When we simply say water for injection, it basically refers to as an excipient to be used in various non-parental preparations. And when we specifically refer to the sterile water for injection, it is exclusively prepared to be used in parental formulations, in ophthalmic formulations, and it is a high type, high type of sterile water being produced for the having the uh, extremely sterile conditions in extremely sterile conditions to be used in various sorts of the parental formulations. Now, when we look at the this table, you can see uh, there are a lot of parameters. There is a lot of specification which needs to be satisfied when we talk about the sterile water for injection. It is assumed to be uh, totally sterile. It is assumed to have all these properties. For example, when we talk about the description, the sterile water for injection should be clear, colorless and odorless liquid. The total organic carbon content should not exceed and should it should not more than 500 ppb. When we talk about the conductivity at 25 degrees Celsius, it should be less than 1.3 microsiemens per centimeter. When we talk about the bacterial endotoxins level, it should be less than 0.25 endotoxins units per ml. When we talk about the microbial limit test, the total aerobic microcount level should be less than 10 CFU, that is colony forming units per 100 ml. When we talk about the concentration of the different pathogens, for example, Escherichia coli or Staphylococcus aureus, all sorts of the pathogens should be totally absent into the sterile water for injection. As per the contents of the acidity or alkalinity, it should not release any red color or blue color in the test. The pH should lie between 5 to 7. And when we talk about the heavy metal con concentration in the sterile water for injection, it should be always less than 0.1 ppm. So you can see that sterile water for injection, all the acceptance criteria at a very high level. Only if it passes through these acceptance criteria, it shall be considered safe to be used in the parenteral. So why it is being kept like that? Because sterile water for injection is to be used for the parenteral formulations, which should be 100% sterile since it is going directly into the bloodstream. So it has to be maintained in this strict uh, criteria. Now, when we talk about the purified water for injection, purified water for injection is used as an excipient, is used as a uh, solvent for in various formulations of the non-parental preparation. So, as compared to the purified water of injection, sterile water for injections have higher standards. It has types acceptance criteria. So, this was about the uh, various types of the role differences between both the kinds of the water. Next, we move to the understanding what are the different methods existing these days for manufacturing the sterile water for injection. So, you can see the water for injection otherwise is prepared through the steam distillation whereby the vapors are being condensed and the water is being collected. So, when we talk about the manufacturing of sterile water for injection at commercial level, basically three methods are used. First is the vapor compression distillation method. So, what is this vapor compression distillation method? As the name indicates, it is the advanced version of the distillation method. What do we do in the distillation method? The steam is being uh, vaporized and the vapors are being collected and condensed and water is being formed. So, it, it is actually a pure form of the water. So, it, the advantage of this vapor compression method is that, first of all, it is used for the commercial production. It, uh, it can produce thousands of liters of water at a very high speed. It has a higher efficiency as compared to the other methods and a low cost compared to the other methods. So, it is widely used uh, through the vapor compression distillation unit. Now, this is also sometimes referred to as the thermal compression or vapor compression method or thermal vapor compression or mechanical vapor compression. So, uh, when we talk it in a technical terms, the technology is similar to the evaporation system which is used for the water desalination. So, vapor compression is also known as a common term in the refrigeration industry, vapor compression. So, furthermore, the vapor compression system can be empowered by either steam 
or electrical heating and have a minimal feed water quality requirements due to the lower operating systems this is the unit for vapor compression distillation unit you can see the vapors are being compressed either using the steam or using the electrical energy the second method which is widely pre uh, prevalent for manufacturing the sterile water for injection is the multiple effect distillation units so as i told in the initial part the principle remains the uh, same that is the distillation the vapors are being condensed and water is being formed so when we talk about the multiple effect distillation it is a well known method and the it the it mainly noted for their multiple column designs which reuses steam energy through the process which requires minimal moving parts but requiring cooling water for the final distillation of the product so you can see there are multiple columns whereby the steams is being condensed and finally you get a pool of water which is final which is used for the final distillation of the product generally water flow injections are kept at minus 80 degrees celsius as they are formed they have to be highly sterile so they are kept at a high temperature and used as such during the formulation so you can see the unit for the water for injection from single effect distillations in the uh, this is a simple machine as compared to the multiple effect distillation now this is the machine for producing the water for injection from multiple effect distillation you can see the columns are uh, larger in number the, they have various heights the steam is being produced at different heights you can see this part different types of the columns different heights and the steam is being condensed and collected to have the water for injection now the third method which is widely used for manufacturing the water for injection is the reverse osmosis method this is used in the uh, our a normal ro system the uh, method is used along with the ultra filtration technique so any sort of the impurity if it remains it can be filtered through the ultra filters so it again uses techniques such as water softening descaling prefiltration degasification nanofiltration electro deionization ozonation uv treatment and microfiltration so you must have seen all these treatments being done in our reverse osmosis plant so the method of manufacturing is uh, a, a quite a simple one but since it is has to be done at a large scale the it becomes little expensive so that is the disadvantage which is associated with the reverse osmosis and ultra filtration method is that a continuous control on its efficiency in terms of the membrane degradation biofilm prevention and microbial charges with periodic sanitization and validations are required so as compared to the multiple effect distillation and vapor compression method the reverse osmosis method actually becomes bit little bit expensive because the maintenance cost is high so the in general the multiple effect distillation unit and vapor compression methods are widely used in the pharmaceutical industry for the preparation of sterile water for the injection thank you so much for watching my video please do like share and subscribe pharmacy pdf for getting further updates stay tuned and stay happy